Hey guys, it's Troy here. I want to share with you my latest fountain pen restoration job for a vintage pen. It's this particular one. This is a fountain pen manufactured in Virginia. I sit in North Carolina where I am. Virginia is just the next state, state up, a couple of miles up the interstate. Uh, this is manufactured by Arnold. Arnold went into business in 1935 and they were around until about 2005 or so, so a 70 year run making pens of various sorts. I believe they devolved into a uh, ballpoint pen manufacturing company before they went out of business around 2005. I shared with you one time already a vintage Arnold fountain pen which was this one right here and uh, you can go look for that video on my YouTube channel and I'll tell you a little more about Arnold and uh, this particular pen. This one being a lever filler. So if you're familiar with a lever filler, there's basically um, there is a lever that presses down on a bar that depresses a either silicone or latex sack in here and that sack acts like the top of an eyedropper and uh, basically expresses out air and will suck in ink or air depending upon you know what you what you're doing with it uh, but this particular pen right here um, is from the 30s as is probably this one right here if this particular pen looks familiar it is probably emulating this this is a Parker dual fold Parker being one of the big three pen manufacturers in America uh, the big three being Waterman uh, Schaefer and Parker and the Parker Duo Fold was something that was very, very popular, especially back in the 1930s. Big, beautiful nib on this boy. Look how nice and clean that one is. Uh, this one, uh, the Parker Big Red, known for uh, its orange color. This being the Parker Duo Fold, continuing in that same orange color. Uh, this one being a button filler here, where you would depress to be able uh, to compress that ink sack. So just like a lever filler. This has an ink sac on it too, and this is a blind cap that just screws on to protect that button. Both of these pens, all right, orange in color from about the same time period. This is a third tier manufacturer, this is a top three manufacturer, and you can see the similarities that Arnold was trying to emulate with the black top. And here at the bottom, you know, the black tip of the barrel, gold trim, gold clip, and this one also being a button filler and this one screws off just a little harder than the other but you have here uh, looks to be like an aluminum button so let's go ahead and uncap it and here we have another big beautiful nib here on my hands yes I was playing with ink and had an ink mishap a little earlier today uh, so I still got you know ink on my hands but uh, so here you've got a button and and you can hear air being aspirated uh, and uh, what happens is that you still have an ink sac just like you would on a lever filler but there's a bar that goes from this button all the way down to this section and when you depress this button um, it presses down and flexes that bar and that bar has another little bar attached to it that depresses that ink sac and acts just like a lever would to depress the ink sac to be able to express out air and be able to suck in ink uh, into that uh, uh, that sac or reservoir. So um, I got this pen, I tore it apart. Um, this is a little ink window that I did not even know was there. This whole section was completely black in here and I never saw that this was an ink window until I got the section out, tore it apart, cleaned it up, got the nib, got the feed out of it, put it all through my ultrasonic cleaner and cleaned everything. And when I pulled it out of the cleaner, I was like, oh, look at that. Now that some of the ink is gone, I see that I have an ink window. So it had some residue still in there, so I was able to get some of that uh, <laughs> crudded up ink that I literally had to go in and scrape and then uh, use a Q-tip to kind of uh, clean the rest of it out. So I got it nice and clean. So, there we go. You go to fit it in the hand, it's just a little shorter than I particularly care for it, but it's still, uh, you know, not horrible. And I'm going to ink this baby up and to see how it does because this will be uh, my writing 
opportunity with my brand new, to me anyway, 1930s Arnold button filler. I'm going to use some Waterman Intense Black. I thought about using Diamine Pumpkin uh, because it's an orange pen, but eh, I'll just uh, go ahead and use some good old Waterman's Black ink. So, Waterman's Intense Black. So, I know that from experience playing with it that I had to pump it a couple of times to get ink up in it uh, because I was filling it up with water earlier. You can hear it. Hear that? Gurgle. That's what you want to hear that. Two. Alright, let's go ahead and pull it out. And set it down. Alright, let's wipe off all the excess. Set it aside. I always keep paper towel here on my desk for just such an occasion. Set aside this little blind cap and let's give it a shot to see how she writes. So this is my Arnold button filler from the 1930s. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? It seems to be a, a fine fine nib. It is a steel nib. And it's not the smoothest thing, at least not yet. But it's not horrific either. It's um, it's acceptable to me as it is, but I can probably make this thing just a little smoother. It does have a little bit of flex to it, so you will be able to get some line variation out of this old 1930s nib. Um, I'll show you a uh, better close-up of this particular nib because I know I've got a picture of it here somewhere. Uh, but it's not bad. And like I told you, I put in a a Waterman's Intense Black. Having had that one Arnold, I figured why not go ahead and see about getting another Arnold and see how it writes. Um, Arnold it was uh, had a reputation for being a solid writer. I got a little bit of ink residue still back on that pen. Um, and they, they had a reputation for being a solid pen at a very affordable price. Uh, see that so you can see that ink window that was there before. you notice how it's all black right now. so you can tell that it's got a good amount of ink draw on that. It's no longer you know the see-through amber that we had earlier so you not you know you get a decent amount of ink in here so it did fairly well on an ink draw an Arnold button filler now <laughs> I'd be honest with you I don't like it posted either I didn't like it unposted necessarily I didn't like it posted it still is a little too short here. I like it a little bigger and beefier uh, than that. Uh, but when you post it, it actually back weights that pen some and throws it off balance. <laughs> and it is a little long with that post because it doesn't post tremendously deep. So if it had posted like that deep, it actually would have been halfway decent. Uh, but, you know, by and large, when you only pay a couple of bucks, and in, in this case, less than a dollar or so, probably, maybe it, maybe it's just a couple of dollars brand new, but I only paid a few dollars for it as it was uh, vintage, and I had to do some work on it, invest a little bit of money into it, put a new sack on it, and definitely some effort on it uh, in order to get it up and, and working. So, you know, what the heck? You know, it's, it's not bad <laughs> for what it is. It's a low-end third tier manufacturer meant to emulate one of the big pen manufacturers. So I guess in that, um, to make you feel good about having a lower end but emulation of a pen, yeah, it's not so bad. But, you know, no complaints really overall with its performance. And considering that you can find a good vintage pen, um, a reliable vintage pen, now, as far as reliable, does it write first time every time? I don't know yet, because you saw me inking it up for, like, the first time. So, 
All right, there we go, folks. Um, my new to me, freshly restored Arnold circa 1930s button filler fountain pen.